What's going on guys? Vic VP back one of the game case arcades video. We are back on the Mega Touch. Did some work. Gonna put the poor man's vinyl on it. So as you saw in my last video, I got my hands on a beautiful Mega Touch. Super excited. I've never really done like bondo work and it really wasn't too bad. It was actually pretty easy. Um, I didn't obviously film the process of that, but basically I'm gonna get ready to vinyl this. Again, using a eBay car vinyl, I'll break it out in a second. Going all blue, sparkle blue. And um, watching a guy on like TikTok, they do like this pinstriping and they use this kind of special tape to get like pinstriping down. I also bought chrome uh, vinyl wrap and I'm gonna try to aim to make an arrow out of the chrome with this kind of pinstriping thing to make like an arrow. So I'm kind of excited for it. Basically, just a quick update. Did some bondo work. I definitely cleaned up the edges, as you could see. I have my sander on the floor. I took off the cover plate that was here. Basically, there's like a bolt plate here because I am gonna vinyl that because it is kind of like paint chipping away. Um, let me get out of selfie mode. Let's take a closer look at what I did. So first and foremost, playing with the Mega Touch. So far, so good. I have to actually buy a new power supply. Power supply died. If you remember in my last video, it just kept making a noise. I actually used a air um, compressor to blow off the dust that was on the actual PC. So now everything kind of looks much cleaner. And I did blow air into the power supply and next you know it died. Um, so I am praying that it is a power supply issue. There is power to the light above, but not to the PC. I'm calling it that the power supply died. I might have fried it when I shot it with the air hose. Um, but that's okay because I'm going to be working on vinyl today. So again, you can take a look at what they did with the side art. Uh, side art came off easily, definitely with the heat gun. Um, when it came to like edges then and all that, I did use some Bondo and clean up a little bit of the edges. Not too much. This is going to be hidden with the vinyl. But there was like one big chunk here. Putting it, Bondo it, and then sanding it. I probably did about, I don't know, what do you call it coats? I did like two coats of Bondo. So one coat sanded and then another coat of Bondo and sanded again. So this came out pretty good. Took off the T molding. Somebody, I don't know who did it, but at the bottom here, there was an act, there was actually a screw. Look at this. Somebody, somebody put a screw through the T molding. <laughs> so not sure why. Um, but anyway, onto the other side. This one needed a little bit more work. There was a big chunk missing here. Again, Bondo this. I was able to get, I should show this side first. I was able to do a nice cleanup here. Honestly, using elbow grease and the heat gun took off all that duct tape residue. Somebody suggested acetone, um, but I kind of did it before the comment went out. I will have to do this one though. I didn't do this side. Basically, again, I kind of just shoot it with the air gun, not the air gun, the heat gun. And uh, I actually used just water and a Brillo pad and it came off. This side's a little beat, not really much I could do. Maybe I'm gonna try the acetone idea. But again, today focusing on vinyl work. Again, you can see my Bondo patch here and up here was a lot of chunks here. But all in all, pretty happy with it. Again, you can see the paint here. This isn't like chipped. This is after I sanded it. I actually went to, I guess, the MDF on it. So. Pretty excited on that. The front, it had this M logo thing going on. Um, this Merit Industry was here. And I was like, I tried to clean it up because it looked perfect, but there was actually a big gouge where the M was. I said, you know what? I'm just gonna take it off. So I'm gonna do a simple vinyl cut there. Basically, I'm gonna just keep it the blue. I might actually go up to the speaker grill, um, depending on how much blue I have. So real quick, I'll break out the vinyl again using some like easy auto wrap stuff. We're gonna open up this first because I think this is the blue. Now real quick, here was a plate here. It was just basically really beat up. The paint on it was shipping and I took the sander to it. Basically again, same thing. We're gonna vinyl wrap this. I'm thinking about all chrome for this and that goes right in the front of Megatouch. So the first box I opened up was actually chrome. So this is straight chrome. This is what I plan to make like the arrow shape with. And then the second one was my blue. Again, you kind of see it in the light. It does have like this kind of sparkle pattern. Pretty nice feeling on it. And again, basically the whole side is gonna be blue. 
they had either this royal blue or a um baby blue and i thought maybe baby blue because a mega touch isn't really blue let's like light like a light blue baby blue uh but no i actually went with the straight blue because i think it looks better again simple roll i basically measure out what's the longest or the widest part of the cabinet and that was the foot right here this is the longest part of the cabinet here which as you can see it works perfectly so i'm going to basically just go up i'm going to definitely lay this on its side and we're going to lay some vinyl so i got it on one side right here and i highly suggest always put a blanket down as you can tell i'm in a garage there's always stuff on the floor so i always put blankets on especially even when i do like arcade builds always blanket down and then vinyl on it because let's say for example i put this on the bare floor learning from my mistakes and i've had it happen once i scratched up the entire artwork panel uh while laying it down on its side so always put a clean kind of i put tarps i have like moving blankets so that's the best thing inside the kit they do give you like the little credit card and they give you a nice brand new blade so i don't do wet some people do wet i don't do this i don't do windex basically just making sure that the the whole cabinet is dry i'm gonna actually while it's on its side i'm gonna open up this door a little bit this way i don't really connect too much on this but even if i do catch it it doesn't matter too much because i could always just take the blade and cut it so i'm gonna probably put the camera down and i'll talk uh while i lay okay so as i mentioned before uh if you are ever doing what i'm gonna be doing there's two actual measurements you need to know you need to know the widest part of the cabinet and the height um, so the product that I ordered on eBay, uh, I believe it's actually six feet long or tall, I should say. And this cabinet is literally probably about three inches short. Not six feet. I don't know what I'm talking about. Because uh, this is shorter than me. Maybe five feet. Basically, the two main measurements you need to know is that you need to know the tallest point, how long the tallest, the height of it is, and the width of it. So my vinyl is wider, which is great, because as you can see, I have overhang here, and I definitely have a lot of overhang here. But my main concern is this here. I need to make sure my vinyl covers that right there. So I do have enough, and I do have enough. I probably have maybe about, yes, it's about three or four inches. So luckily with this kind of poor man's kind of vinyl, I don't need to worry about keeping it straight, kind of like how that kind of artwork would be, because this is just one solid color. So I don't need to worry too much about straightness. Just making sure that every piece is covered. I do have the little door open, so this here is the door. I don't have to worry about that. I don't want to give myself too much. Actually, yes, I'm going to go that way. Yeah. So what I'm doing right now is basically I'm making sure, because I will have excess. As you can see right here, this is excess. So I can actually use this blue possibly for the extra parts that I need. So it's kind of pointless to waste the vinyl. So I kind of want to grab a point and make sure it is secure. So I'm going to, I'm going to basically ride this to the edge, not all the way to the edge. I'm going to have it hang a little bit and I'm going to have this here. It's really it right there. Yes. I'm, I'm good. I'm going, I'm going. So you could like, tape it down if it was very serious and they did like a straight you know if i had a wording here and i needed it straight i would definitely tape this down but basically i'm right now going to ride the edge as close as possible just making sure that i don't waste vinyl and i always go from you know one side all the way down i'm going to basically tear this before i actually start i should make sure i have my blade in my hand <laughs> Always have the tools in your hand. So I got blade and I have squeegee in my hand, or I should say the credit card. I don't want to scratch the vinyl. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take this and I'm just going to peel this. I hope this is content you guys want to watch. <laughs> Definitely always want to make sure that also the, you know, your base is clean. And right now I have it pulled downwards and I'm just going to cut. Not on the actual cabinet or else you will get a hair. Yeah. They go right here. I'm happy with that. And I can now pull this up a little bit towards me. Yeah, I'm gonna lay that there. I'm gonna hit it with the squeegee just a little bit right at the end. 
So where you are, you don't really see, but I'm making a little bit of an air bubble. Now that I actually have this rock solid down, once you kind of apply it like that, that ain't going nowhere. So I'm gonna pull my vinyl a little bit. This way I get rid of any little air bubble. Keep it straight. Making sure I'm still there. Yes, I am. And yes, I'm good. So now, cool, awesome. So now that I got that down, and again, you want to always try not to have any wrinkles because if you close on a wrinkle, it's a wrap. The vinyl is screwed. Now that this is locked in, this is this ain't going nowhere right now, right? I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna bring this, and again, it's locked in. I'm gonna pull up a little bit of the white backing. And you can see it's so tight. It is underneath the backing. There we go. Always keeping the vinyl straight. You definitely don't want it to wrinkle or else you're gonna have a bad time. So I always fold it in half like that and then I bring it back up, keeping it straight and boom, we are down. And now I apply it again because I pulled the white back a little bit. So far so good, not too bad. Now I'm gonna have control of this. Pull the white a little bit, keep it tight. And again, with this cabinet and its design, it's not like a full cabinet. So I do have to be careful when I hit these edges. Yeah, this is going sideways, this is good. Pull them back. Again, trying to keep it straight. Trying to keep my eye also on where the edge is. Because car vinyl, when you hit like the edge with the credit card, you can either lick it off, but it does leave like a little bit of a scratch. You want to be definitely careful with that. And we just keep rinsing and repeating. Nice and slow. Don't, don't go pulling like two feet at a time. I go nice and slow. So far this is connecting good. Again, a little bit, no need to rush, because every time you rush, that is when shit hits the fan. And again, in my situation, the cabinet is just an odd shape, so I'm being gentle along the edges so it doesn't kind of scratch out. Again, these are like cheap credit cards with like film on it, or the felt, I should say. Just going nice and easy. Nice, I'm right here, look at that. I'm getting close. So now I'm just gonna hold this and bloop, drop out. That is it. That is laid. Cool. Now, we take our blade. I do like to kind of, with this kind of cabinet, luckily, um, it does have T-molding cut. So like, I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna take this here. I'm leaving like about maybe an inch and a half to two inches, I'm gonna cut this. So now I could actually play with this here. I'm gonna probably cut it just a little bit more, making sure I don't cut on it. And now that I'm here, as you can see, I could actually pull this downwards. See that? I could pull this down. I'm not worried about this, because I'm gonna essentially cut it. But I could nicely cut this down. Any like curves, just cut it. Cut it downwards so you could basically break the seal. Almost kind of like T-molding. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm actually gonna cut inside the T-molding. This way, the T-molding is gonna keep it even more secured down. Again, little tips that you learn and little tricks that you learn while you do it. And again, it's always on the edges, you just kind of make like spaghetti. I'll bring you in closer once I'm done. Again, I don't have to worry about this, this could wrinkle. We're going underneath the cabinet now. I'm not worried about that. Same thing here. I do want to be careful here because I am in the front. And then slice it here. Yeah, and it drops. Just drops so beautifully. And again, it just, it, it, with me going into the T-molding, and again, I'm gonna bring you in closer. It actually goes in, like I'll actually hammer the T-molding with the vinyl in the slot. 
basically just adds more, um, what's the word I want to use? Just security. Might as well keep it easy. This now is just too much extra, so we're gonna just cut this. Don't wanna go too crazy, rather cut way out than what I need to be in. Go. So I'm gonna be careful, because I could use this still. So I'm gonna put this back on. Boom. Cool. Again, I will bring you in closer. Don't have a hissy fit. <laughs> this is cool, definitely digging it. Definitely liking it. There's really no, I mean, not that there's no turning back, but eBay vinyl, like the thing I did learn is like, you can't really return it. Most of this stuff does come from China. So keep that in mind. Now we're, now we're, we're, we're in, we're in like flip. I'm gonna bring you in to see what I'm doing and then I'll show you what I do as far as the cut. So now again, as you can see, we're right on the edge. The main thing is that the main panel doesn't have any air bubbles. It is pretty smooth. I don't have to worry about, you know, the screws actually, you don't even see the screws, which is cool. But again, as far as what I'm doing here, I'm bringing it down here. And as you can see, again, I make these little slits so you could hit the corners. Same thing here, this is downwards. Cool. So again, as you can see, we're down here. We're by the T-molding here. Again, I'm not worried about these wrinkles because this is gonna be cut out. Again, always be careful where you're cutting. I didn't go on the surface. I'm right at the edge of it to hit this. So right now, I'm gonna show you on this end. But basically, there is, there's a slot for the T-molding, right? So I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna keep this tight. I'm gonna need to put the camera down. But basically, I'm gonna put blade into the T-molding and then cut. Now, that is free, and then when I put the T-molding in, this is gonna go actually into it. And again, I don't have to worry about this bubbling because the T-molding is gonna hold it down. You could do it the real way, which is, which I'll show you here, and that's cut along the edge. So now along the edge here, because this is the bottom of the cabinet, I'm gonna basically just keep this like this. It will be a little rocky because the edging of the cabinet here is not perfectly straight. So you do want to kind of be careful. And that is it. Honestly, yes, you will see a little bit of jaggedness. That's the bottom of the cabinet though. That's just a given. Main thing that we're focusing on is the actual visible area of the cabinet. So now again, here I'm gonna do the T-molding cut way. So I'm gonna just cut this out, making sure I'm not messing up the plastic. I'm gonna keep this taut, tight, taut, whatever you wanna say. And I'm just gonna to try to find where the T-molding cut is. It's right there. So again, I'm gonna grab this in my hand. T-molding cut. are now pulling out again it could overlap because again the t-molding will hold it in place and i'm not worried about that and that right there is one i'm going to be careful with this because i did make this on purpose so i could save the excess to possibly use on the door so i don't want to waste it so this is pretty good again like i said my objective is to the the vinyl is going to go in the actual T-molding area. And with that, it'll be held down into place. Boom. I'm gonna pull this out. Now, yes, essentially, once you lay this, like the glue now is kind of like, can't really use it. But, again, we'll figure out a way to use it. So I just started hitting in T-molding. Look at this, oh, beautiful. It is beautiful. So for the haters, cause it's gonna be haters. Again, I basically come along, push it in, and then I'll hammer it in. Just making sure you don't get these little bubbles. That's why it's very important to do two hands. Maybe I can show you on the fly. Basically again, I'm gonna put my hand down here and we tap it. So I'm basically folding downwards 
And again, if I do get a little air bubble like that, I just pull back. I don't want to go too far. Again, you could cut along the edge. But sometimes, honestly, with car vinyl, it works. It's hit or miss. I found my little kind of technique here works pretty well. That's it. We're down. I do have my special kind of straight edge cut, flush cut. I have my like flush cut T-molding cutter. And again, this cabinet doesn't really have an exact edge or end. So I'm gonna have to just cut that. I always cut a little bit short of uh, more, I should say, of what I need. And then I come here and then I make sure, yeah, make sure all my edges are as tight as they could be. That's the one challenge I always have when it comes to T-molding is making sure that the T-molding cut is straight. And I said, the way this cabinet is built, I'll bring you in close so you can see. Just, this is the rear though. But you can see like there's not really much. It ends there. I'm gonna actually cut it just a little bit. I'm a little bit shy. Not bad, pretty good. I can now go and like hot glue this if I wanted to. But again, this is the rear. Unfortunately, that is how it always is on most older arcade cabinets. But that right there is the back. T-molding done. I'll hit the front real quick, might as well. Always makes you laugh because like this is the next thing that's gonna go out of the house. Uh, I'm waiting for somebody to buy this off offer up. But people are like, Vic, what's in the fridge? And I'm like, well, it's uh, it's T-molding. <laughs> I got my three quarter inch and then I got my half inch. I even have more uh, car vinyl. <laughs> so like I said now, lifted it up, span it around. Always keep the tarp on the bottom to protect what we just did. And now we're gonna do the next side. Okay, so now, real quick, I'll show you Did the other side. I like it, I think it looks pretty cool so far. The only big thing I'm noticing is that, um, again, this cabinet's unique. It's kind of got this like edging here. It doesn't look, it looks good here. Um, but on this side, it looks like some of the padding is missing, as you can see here. So uh, I guess I could show you this now. Um, I got this tape, this is the floss. Basically, I'm making a design and uh, I had a second, like I had to like not even research it, but I had to guess it out. Um, basically, I'm gonna put the chrome here. So it's gonna be all chrome here on this arrow here, um, blue here, and then chrome here. Is it that? Let me second guess. No, it's chrome here, blue here, chrome here. So chrome right on the edging, blue in this little gap, chrome, chrome. So as you can see, like, you need two cuts, I guess. Uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm literally winging this. Um, but hopefully this comes out good. <laughs> All right, guys, so this... <laughs> don't believe everything you see on TikTok and Amazon because it's pure trash. I don't like it. Not to mention the chrome. It, it just doesn't look good. I am leaving it alone as just blue. I'm going to leave it blue. There's, there's no way I'm doing this. This chrome isn't right doesn't go this tape thing that I bought it's it's not really what I imagined it to be so I am not wasting any more time on this I'm leaving it blue all right guys can't lie that chrome idea I had was a complete fail I'm not perfect but might as well admire the final touches of mega touch I'm gonna call it big blue I even did the front front panel here that piece I said that I sanded I made it blue. You can kind of see the glitter on that. There you go. Again, in person, it's pretty cool. Probably the only thing I should have done was get the gloss finish on this. This is like a matte finish. It looks great though. And honestly, it does look good because of the plastic um, kind of bezel. I like it. Naming it Big Blue. I'm contemplating right here are the speaker holes. I don't know if I want to puncture the hole. I'm going to honestly leave it like that. This looks pretty cool. Plain, sometimes keeping it plain and simple, it uh, it does wonders. So there you guys have it, a quick poor man's vinyl job. I'm so mad about that, that chrome. I was gonna even put the chrome here on this piece and I was like, nope, doesn't look good. I'd rather leave the chrome T-molding and call it a day. Just gotta get the PC power supply in 
and uh you know little wipe down that is it mega touch big blue all right guys that is it calling it right now the mega touch is done i did have this up on facebook marketplace and we got a hit of uh, guys asking his wife if he could get it i wasn't going to sell it but i put it on facebook marketplace and we got a hit so again basically cleaned up everything the bill acceptor does not work and the coin uh micro switch it needs a new one but i do have this set to free play so you don't really need any of that um and i just got in a brand new power supply for the pc so again like i said i had it where i cleaned it and i kind of fried it i guess and now this is good to go Definitely gonna play a couple of rounds of Photo Hunt. That is my game. Again, set to free play. This does go into a track mode. I didn't put any of the images in. As you can see, there is a track mode. Definitely, like I said, awesome, awesome game to have. I mean, this again, like I said, touchscreen stuff, kids stuff, there is adult stuff. It right now is midnight, so it activates the adult mode. Um, customer said, hey Vic, does it have box drop? Does it have um, the monkey bash? So this version does have every game that he wanted. A couple of, uh, he asked me about poker stuff. So if I go to card games, and he was big on like, um, you know, if it had like the strip poker stuff. So there is a whole section there. Uh, pretty cool. There you guys have it. VigVP, Gamecase Arcades, the Mega Touch, unique Z cabinet, officially done with the poor man's vinyl. Love it. Chrome T-molding. Looks like a brand new cabinet.